Welcome to this training video for the Hylotherm chemo care devices to prevent chemotherapy induced peripheral neuropathy with patients. This training video is designed for medical professionals in the UK that are using Hylotherm um, to cool patients' hands and feet during chemotherapy to prevent chemotherapy induced peripheral neuropathy and also hand foot syndrome. These side effects are very common with certain chemotherapy drug regimes um, and they can be very uh, debilitating for patients, severely impacting on quality of life, increasing the risk of trips or falls, um, sometimes long term preventing patients from returning to work. Um, and in extreme circumstances, they can also lead to dose reduction during treatment um, and also lead to uh, even ceasing chemotherapy treatment altogether, which can have a devastating impact on the patient's long term prognosis. Um, so one study uh, that was carried out found that um, without cooling, 50% of breast cancer patients developed moderate to severe CIPN symptoms. Whereas when hylotherm cooling was used to um, prevent chemotherapy induced peripheral neuropathy, they found that 93% of patients did not develop moderate to severe symptoms. Um, we do have lots of published studies on the use of hylotherm with um, chemotherapy patients. These are all published on our website, so please do look at the CIPN page of our website, which is hylotherm.co.uk. All the latest published studies will be on there. Um, in terms of indications for use, uh, we would recommend that hylotherm can be used with um, any chemotherapy drugs that can cause chemotherapy induced peripheral neuropathy or hand foot syndrome. There are also a couple of um, contraindications, mainly relating to circulatory disorders. Um, there is a list of these contraindications now on the screen. Um, in terms of use, we would normally recommend that uh, hylotherm is used as a preventative measure from the first cycle of chemotherapy. It is by far best to prevent rather than to cure. So um, please do encourage patients to use from the very first cycle, if at all possible, as this will stop them from developing any of these symptoms. If a patient hasn't decided to cool from the outset and they start to develop symptoms of CIPN or hand foot syndrome, they can start cooling once they have developed those symptoms. This will help to prevent the side effects from getting any worse and it will also help to improve these side effects. But the very best is to cool from the outset or to make that decision as early as possible if symptoms start to develop. The Hylotherm chemo care system comprises of two devices which are supplied on a trolley with a stand for the cuffs. There are two cuffs for the hands and two cuffs for the feet. We also have a triple system available which includes the Hylotherm scalp cooler. So it is possible to cool for prevention of CIPN at the same time as using a scalp cooler, whether that is a Hylotherm scalp cooler or, or any other brand of scalp cooling. So each device contains two litres of either sterile or distilled water. The uh, system is a closed system. So once that water has been added, it doesn't need anything doing to it. Um, it doesn't need to be um, sort of changed or topped up. Um, we recommend a six monthly water change as a minimum. This can either be done as part of a maintenance contract or it can be done internally and we can provide you with information on how to carry that out. There is a water level indicator on the front of the device which shows you the level of water in the machine at the time. Um, the cuffs are very large so they do contain quite a lot of water within that system. Um, so um, it is worth looking out for the water level error. So we have two versions of devices. On one of the versions it will come up saying error water level. On the other device it will come up saying E21. These are both a water level error and you don't need to do anything with the water in the system unless you get one of those um, flashing up as an error message. 
If that does appear on the screen, then you can add either sterile or distilled water, definitely no tap water, so either sterile or distilled water, and that is just poured into the device through the circular grate and the filter that is on top of the device um, through the two connectors. Very much um, it's recommended to add small bits of water. So really you're only looking to just inch it above the minimum level. So uh, when, when the device is initially filled, you will start at the maximum level. But if you are topping up, just add very small amounts to take it just over the minimum level. So the devices will need to be uh, plugged into the power supply and then turned on at the back. Um, you can adjust the temperatures up and down. Um, so the normal recommended temperature is between 15 and 17 degrees. We would recommend starting at 15 degrees. Um, and if the patient is struggling with it being too cold, you can adjust that to 16 or 17 degrees. So that's your standard temperature range that you would work within. Um, there are certainly um, instances that we have come across where patients have cooled at higher temperatures of 18 or 19 degrees because they've been more sensitive to the cold um, and those patients have had far better results than patients who have decided not to cool at all. Um, so it is worth bearing that in mind if you've got a patient that is particularly sensitive to the cold. Um, it's worth saying that these are um, in no way as intensely cold as scalp cooling. The temperatures involved are much milder, so most patients will tolerate this cooling very, very well, um, particularly if they are prepared with sort of warm clothing or a blanket or whatever else it may be. Um, so to adjust the temperature, you can use the up and the down arrows. Um, the displays on the different versions appear slightly differently. So for version one, you have an actual temperature and a nominal temperature. The nominal temperature is the only thing that you can adjust. So you can adjust the nominal temperature and then you will wait until the actual temperature comes in line with the nominal temperature that you have set. For version two, there will just be one temperature on the screen and that is the temperature that you can adjust. There is also a snowflake image, so the snowflake image will flash when it is not at temperature and then once it has achieved the required temperature, it will stay static on the screen. So as soon as you can see that snowflake static on the screen, you know that the machine is at the temperature that you have set. So once it's achieved the temperature, you can then start the water flow and the water will start to flow through the cuffs. Um, it may take a little bit of time for the temperature to adjust, depending on environmental temperature. Um, if you are in a heat wave, it'll take slightly longer. So for that reason, we recommend where possible getting everything set up and started before your patient arrives. The Hylotherm devices prevent CIPN by um, cooling to prevent the uptake of cytotoxic substances into the nerve endings of the hands and feet. The timing of the cooling is really important, um, along with obviously the temperature control that we've already covered. So in terms of timing, you need to cool for 30 minutes before, during, and then after the uh, chemotherapy treatment. So the timings relate only to the CIPN causing drug. Um, it's not um, sort of all of the, the treatment, it's just the CIPN causing drug. So that may, may help in terms of overall chair time. So the 30 minutes pre-cooling is absolutely sacred. That's really important because that pre-cooling is going to make sure that none of those substances are taken up into those nerve endings. So the 30 minutes pre-cooling should be completely protective. Um, you need to make sure that patients are aware that within that first 30 minutes, um, they shouldn't um, take any breaks at all. So um, they should have gone to the toilet and be prepared, set up with an activity such as um, watching a film or listening to an audio book um, so that they do not interrupt that 30 minutes of cooling um, for the initial period. 
Um, then during the treatment, they can take short breaks so they can um, go to the toilet or they can slide their hand in and out um, to have sips of drinks or to eat. The aim should be that overall patients are trying to cool their hands and feet for the majority of the time. So um, keep those breaks to a minimum, but they are possible after that initial 30 minutes of pre-cooling um, when they are receiving the CIPN causing drug. Um, the post-cooling current recommendations are that there should be a 30 minute post-cooling time as standard. Um, and that this should be increased to 60 minutes if patients are showing any symptoms of CIPN or hand foot syndrome. At the moment, at the time of filming, there are some studies that are due to be published which are looking at removing this post-cooling time. So um, early results seem to suggest that it may be possible to uh, eliminate the standard post-cooling time um, and to just call for 30 to 60 minutes if a patient has symptoms of CIPN or hand foot syndrome. Um, in terms of the latest recommendations or your own internal policy, um, please refer to the laminated instructions, which will be in the trolley drawer, um, and also to our website, hylotherm.co.uk, which will contain all the latest studies and recommendations in terms of timing. The Hylotherm um, cuffs for the hands and feet are all multi-use, um, so they can be used um, sort of by multiple patients over long periods of time, and they can just be cleaned down using normal medical grade cleaning wipes. Um, we do have some inner socks and gloves that are available um, that can be purchased from Hylotherm. These are not compulsory, um, but lots of, lots of centres do choose to use them. These are single patient rather than single use, so they can be used for multiple sessions for the same patient. These just create a sort of um, thin barrier between the patient's skin um, and the cuff, but as I said, they are, they are non-essential. Um, so when fitting the cuff, you want to make sure that the fitting is fairly tight, um, but it shouldn't be uncomfortable for the patient. Um, so just make sure that you've got good skin contact, um, but it's not um, too uncomfortable for the patient. Um, it's worth pointing out that for a lot of patients who choose to use Hylotherm from the outset, um, clinics or hospitals will make a decision to um, not use a cannula. Um, they might use um, a port or a pick um, rather than cannulation. Um, but if a cannula is being used, um, then you can actually fit the handcuff so that it is literally just cooling from the base of the hand. Um, so you can position it so that um, it is literally um, keeping as much um, of this area free as possible. Um, it may be that in some situations, a decision is made to just cool three limbs um, and to leave the cannulated limb um, free from cooling. But obviously that will be down to the medical team and a decision being made at the time of cannulation or cooling. Um, it's also worth pointing out that um, once the water flow has been started and the cuff has been fitted to the patient, you should check um, to feel that the water is circulating all the way around. You can do this by just feeling whether it is inflated on either side of the blue tubing. So it's quite a simple, easy check to make, but it's worth doing so that you can ensure that the cuff is cooling all the way around the patient's hand or foot. So once the patient has completed their treatment um, and any of the required cooling time, then you can stop the water flow on the front and turn the devices off at the back. Um, you need to keep these uh, cables connected the whole time. So the cuffs don't need to be disconnected at any point in the entire treatment. So if a patient uh, takes a break to go to the toilet or they want to stop using for very short periods, then you should leave these connected the whole time, as you should at the end of the treatment as well. So these stay connected throughout. Um, you, there's no need to disconnect them. Um, in terms of the cuffs, so these are multi-use cuffs, so they can be used with many patients many times. 
So they are cleaned down between patients, just using standard medical grade cleaning wipes or cleaning products. And you can wipe down the inside of the cuffs um, and also the tubing and the outside of the device. Um, so once that's done, they are then ready for the next patient. For more information, there are laminated user instructions in every trolley drawer. So these are step-by-step -step guides, which will include things such as cooling times. Um, they will also have more information on any troubleshooting and they will have contact details for contacting Hylotherm. Um, you can also contact us via our website where there's lots of information, including all of the latest published studies, um, or you can make contact through your local representative. We also have some patient leaflets so that patients can have all the information they need to be able to make an informed decision about calling with Hylotherm. Thank you very much for your time. If there is anything else you need, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you.